What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So yesterday at WWDC, Apple previewed iOS 13, which of course is the next major software update for the iPhone. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over all of the new features and changes you can expect to see when iOS 13 launches later this year. Unlike iOS 12, iOS 13 actually does have some significant updates and additions, which is great to see. And I'll do my best to talk about all the important ones here. But if I do happen to miss anything, let me know down in the comments and maybe we can get a running list of everything that's new. So first things first, let's talk about what devices will be getting iOS 13. Fortunately, it's most of them, but Apple did drop support for the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus with this update. So anything from the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus and beyond, including the iPhone SE, they're all going to support iOS 13. And that also includes the new iPod Touch as well. And like most iOS updates, you can expect to see this update launching in the fall. Right now it is in beta for developers only, and Apple will likely have a public beta in the next month or so if you want to test out iOS 13 yourself. I should also note that iPads are technically getting iOS 13, but Apple rebranded it as iPad OS. And while we won't be talking about the iPad in this video, here are all the devices that will get iPad OS. Basically, everything from the iPad Air 2 and newer. Right off the bat, the first thing you might notice with iOS 13 is a speed increase when launching apps and generally just interacting with your phone. Apple claims that apps can launch up to twice as fast with iOS 13. And while it is tough to gauge performance with beta software like this sometimes, I definitely feel like I'm getting a bit snappier of an experience. Another improvement Apple made is with Face ID. In the keynote, Apple said that Face ID should be 30% faster, and this is something I noticed right away. The unlock animation is quicker, my face seems to be recognized instantly and more consistently, and getting into my phone is definitely much quicker now. I think for people with last year's iPhone 10, especially, this is probably going to be a pretty obvious change. I've definitely had a love-hate relationship with Face ID in the past, but iOS 13 really makes me like it more now. Inside Control Center, you aren't going to notice really any changes at first glance, but Apple added a really convenient new shortcut for joining Wi-Fi networks and connecting to Bluetooth devices. So rather than having to go through the Settings app, you can now simply press on the Wi-Fi icon to join a network, and same with the Bluetooth icon as well. This is something a lot of people were asking for, so it's definitely a welcome addition in iOS 13. Probably the most talked about new feature in iOS 13 is of course Dark Mode. This is something we got on the Mac a little while back, and everyone seems to have been wanting it on the iPhone. So now in Control Center, when you long press on screen brightness, you'll see a new icon called Appearance, and tapping on this will enable or disable Dark Mode. Dark Mode is basically just a visual change that makes most of your apps and things black and gray to make it a little easier on your eyes. Most of the default iPhone apps do have a Dark Mode theme, so the phone app, for example, is now all black. The calendar app looks like that as well. Mail, Notes, Settings, and the Messages app all have a dark mode theme as well, which you can see right here. Now, there are a couple default apps like Weather that don't have a dark mode, and also any of your third-party apps that you installed from the App Store won't go dark either, unless they offer their own separate dark mode like Twitter does. So this is mainly just for most of the default apps and system UI. You can dive a little deeper with dark mode in the Settings app, and from here you can obviously change between light and dark, and you'll also find an automatic setting, and enabling this will allow you to set a schedule for when you want dark mode on or off. This is sort of similar to how night shift works, so if you want your iPhone to be in dark mode, say from 8pm until 5am, you can set that as the schedule. And one other thing you might have saw already, some of Apple's wallpapers actually have a light and dark mode that switches automatically. So you already saw that the orange wallpaper goes red in dark mode, the blue wallpaper goes from a lighter to a darker color, as does the green one as well, and the black changes from a white and grey theme to a black theme. From what I understand, this little feature only applies to Apple's own default wallpapers right now now, and not any that you set yourself. Another small little tweak I know a lot of people wanted to see was an updated volume indicator, and we do get that. So first off, when switching between silent and ringer mode, you get a new pop-up at the top of the screen, and I really like how Apple did this. For the volume icon, you also get a redesigned look with a pop-up coming on the side of the screen next to the buttons on the side of the phone. When you click the volume button once, you'll get a slightly larger full volume indicator, and when you click the buttons more than once or hold them down, the indicator shrinks down even more. Also, if for some reason you want a more exact volume level, you can actually adjust the volume with your finger when the icon comes up. This is a little awkward and sometimes tough to catch the icon before it goes away since it's so small, but I can appreciate it at least being an option. iOS 13 also gets a new swipe keyboard, and if you're an Android user or maybe you used a third-party keyboard that had this function, you know this was long overdue. So you of course can still type normally, but you can also simply swipe from letter to letter in order to type out the word.
word you want. This takes some getting used to for sure, but just playing around with it for a bit, I found that it actually was pretty accurate. For some people, this is significantly faster than typing too, and like I said, Apple has sort of been late to the game with this, so it's a really nice addition. The swipe keyboard works in any app, so notes, mail, messages, and anywhere else, and it doesn't need to be enabled or installed, it's just available by default. While Apple didn't necessarily redesign too many of the default iOS apps this time around, one app that sees some big changes is Photos. The default view for your photos and videos now has this sort of tile look with video previews going on as you scroll through, and you can pinch in or out to view more or less of the photos to find what you need faster. If you have a ton of photos, this can definitely be helpful, and honestly, I'm really happy to see the Photos app was redesigned a bit. They also improved search as well, which was needed, and added a few other minor visual and organizational tweaks as well, including the ability to view your photos by day, month, and year, which again, just gives you a different way of organizing and viewing your pictures. If you're a big fan of editing your photos and videos, you'll also find a few more options here as well. There are a couple new editing options for photos and videos to help you get the right look, and one of the biggest changes actually is the ability to crop and rotate videos directly through the Photos app. As strange as it sounds, this feature actually got a lot of people's attention at the keynote, and it shows once again Apple's commitment to offering a really robust Photos app with tons of editing options directly on the phone. Apple has combined the Find My iPhone and Find My Friends app into one app, simply called Find My. So you'll be able to see any friends or accounts that you share your location with under the People tab, and also any phones, iPads, or computers under the Devices tab, all from the one single app. Apple also said that the Find My app can even locate devices that are offline or sleeping by sending a secure Bluetooth beacon that can be detected by other devices nearby, so it should be even easier to locate lost devices now. The Messages app received a slight visual update, but the most noticeable new feature actually has to do with editing your name and default photo in iMessage. So now you can actually set a default first and last name and add a default picture for yourself using your camera, photo library, or Memoji, and that information will automatically be seen and sent on other people's iOS devices on iOS 13. This sort of eliminates the need of adding new contacts if you just want to offer people that info up front, and it's just another reason why iMessage is such a solid messaging platform. Speaking of Memojis, Apple also launched Memoji stickers, and this is basically just a way for you to share Memojis with folks who don't have the latest iPhones. They're basically sent like regular emojis or pictures just with your custom face or animal or whatever. It's not something I personally use but it's a nice addition for people who do want to share their Memojis with even more of their friends. Also, you'll now see even more customization options for your Memoji as well. Apple added a ton of new things, including more facial features, piercings, teeth options, and more. So getting your Memoji to look exactly like you should be even easier. Safari in iOS 13 sees really just one noticeable change. Safari settings are now easily accessible using the icon at the top left corner near the search and web address bar. From there, of course, you can change the text size in Safari, hide the toolbar, swap between desktop and mobile if available, and adjust the specific website settings for any website you're currently on. Apple's Mail app also received a couple visual changes. When writing an email, things look a little different, and responding to an email now brings up a new options tab which includes muting email threads and blocking senders. But most notably, how email threads are displayed has also been changed significantly as well. And I actually really like this update, I think this makes the app quite a bit more easy to navigate, and threads a lot easier to read. Another change that was long rumored to launch with iOS 13 was an update to the undo function. Now, instead of shaking the phone to undo or redo something you typed, there are some gesture controls and a new menu instead. This is probably the only thing I've discovered that's still a little iffy, and there seems to be a few different ways to sort of interact with the undo and redo function. It's a three finger gesture where you swipe forward to redo and backwards to undo, and you can do this when the keyboard is up either on the keyboard itself or anywhere else on the screen. Furthermore, if you simply just touch on the screen or keyboard with three fingers, you'll actually see a new menu that has redo and undo buttons. It also has a cut button, which is the scissors, what appears to be a tab button, and some sort of page icon that I haven't quite figured out yet. So if you know what that button does, feel free to let me know. Overall, the setup is interesting. I think it's honestly a little confusing right now though. Apple says information on undo and redo will pop up when people first set up their phone, 
but if it requires this much instruction, I'm not sure that it's the best move. Unfortunately, since iOS 13 is still pretty buggy, I haven't been able to reinstall some default apps I deleted a while ago, including Maps and Reminders, which is a little unfortunate. But both of these apps have been updated for iOS 13. Maps gets a big visual update and some new features, including Street View and better control over your favorite and frequent places and addresses. Apple has basically rebuilt Maps from the ground up, which I think was sort of necessary since myself and many other folks still prefer Google Maps, of course. And the Reminders app has also been completely redone as well. It should now be much easier to manage and organize your reminders, and the app itself looks quite a bit better overall, honestly. Finally, Apple made some changes to how you can use AirPods on iOS 13. First off, incoming messages will now be read to you through your AirPods, and you can reply with your voice. The best new feature, in my opinion, though, is the ability to share your music from one iPhone to up to two pairs of AirPods at one time. As with most new iOS features, this has been available on Android, but it's great to see it on iOS now too. So there you go. Those are some of the biggest changes and updates to iOS 13 that you'll see on your iPhone when it launches this fall. If I did happen to miss anything big, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Also let me know what feature on iOS 13 you're most excited for as well. Also be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.